Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Today's episode is brought to you by cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to cars.com. It's magical. Hello, friends. Kirk Anderson of Mavs Moneyball joining you for another edition of Group Therapy. Apologize for not having the Christmas Day one, but I honestly drank a lot and was too tired by the end of that game. Um, yeah, so we're here now. I have to get up really early in the morning and drive back to Texas. Let's hang out for a little bit, maybe 20, 25 minutes. Get your takes off. Uh, And let's hear how things are going. Um, For those of you who didn't happen to catch this game, I don't believe you because you're all late, staying up late talking to me. The Mavericks beat Portland 132 to 117. The final score was not indicative of what the game was like for most of the second half. The Mavs actually led by 20 for a significant stretch of the game, almost getting to 30 points at one uh, early in the fourth quarter. So, all right, uh, you know the the drill. So let's uh, send your speaker requests. Uh, it instant mutes you when you bring you on stage. So don't uh, be sure to to unmute yourself, and we will see how things go. Uh, Sam, how you doing tonight? Welcome. Get you up here early for once. Yeah, I know, right? And it's the latest it's ever been in a while. So <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, good win. You know, it was needed. Obviously, Josh Green game. Um, you know, showed a little something. It's just funny that uh he did this, but then Desmond Bain went off of like thirty three and they beat the Suns. So it's just kinda you no know, one's gonna be compared to some type of unfortunate for Josh, but hey, you know, if you can stack games together like this, you know, it I'll take it at this point. Yeah, I mean that's kinda where my head was once it was clear that the Mavericks were gonna win, is that you know they're two. They've only won two of their last six, but these last three games, um, the Milwaukee game, the game on Christmas against Utah, and this game, like, have not felt terrible. They, the last two games, like the Utah game, just, I mean, I, I, I probably should have had a group therapy because I wanted to make fun of Donovan Mitchell so badly. He was so excited for for that stupid game, um, or for winning that game when like they were healthy and competing. God, what the hell is that noise? This is a fun part about being at, at your in laws. Never know what uh, what's going to happen. Um, and anyhow, uh-huh. must have been a uh, washer dryer. That was fun. Um, and and it's just like like there've been little things that these guys can build on. And that was nice. It was nice to see. Uh, tonight was another game where I think, you know, the, the things that this was like the KP game I've really been waiting on. Um, there's been a lot of talk about how well he's played this year. And I really think there's something to that, but this was like the offensive kind of complete package performance where he looks like a star. Granted, he was playing against nobody. So I, I sort of, it's, it's, but it's nice to see him like actually do it, you know? Yeah, it's just it's just ironic that, you know, with all these guys in COVID protocols, this team has actually been in the very least interesting to watch. And oh yeah. That's all we've been asking for for the last month and a half since the season started. You know, just give us something to watch and yeah, they're getting beat, you know, it's still kind of the same fourth quarter, but I could take us getting beat with our, you know, hardship players and us giving us effort, and, you know, we've pretty much in half these – in all these games, actually. We've led in most of these games. 
Yep. So like yep. the fact that we're in the game with these guys just lets us know that hey, switch it up because <laughs> sure. you never know what's gonna happen at that point. Sure, sure. I mean, the elements that that I I can't be getting a three pointer to go early. I mean, it was like midway through the second quarter. I think it was tied forty one up, and he hit a three, and then the Mavericks never looked back. And the three point shot not being there for him this year yet has been kind of the piece that, that I think will unlock a lot more for the whole offense. Um, he was only three of seven in this game. I say only, which I shouldn't because he's, he's hitting, now he's hitting 28% from three on the year. Um, if, if he is able to hit 35%, his career average, um, it opens up a lot for them because you saw just sort of what happens. It's what's happened for his whole career. The seven foot three guy hits a 40 foot three pointer and everyone freaks out. And all of a sudden the, the floodgates were open to the rim. I mean, I, I, I can't make the statement definitively, but I feel as if part of what led to Josh Green's big assist game were the threes that were falling before he entered the game. And some of those were KPs. And so it's just, it's really, really nice to see kind of like the, the complete both sides of the ball game from KP. Um, did you see the part The part of the game that cracked me up the most was when Boban kept posting up <laughs> whenever, whenever Porzingis was trying to drive that uh, I want, like, I wonder if Luca was kind of like, Hey, that's what happens to me when you do this. But you know, that's, that's, that's neither here nor there. Just a really fun, you know, series of games lately, because I think what we've seen is we want to see the Mavericks play a little more of tempo. We want to see the Mavericks play a little harder. And we want to see the Mavericks move without the ball more. Um, lots of off ball. And you guys are talking about it in the chat. Like they had 38 assists tonight. 38 assists is the most that they've had in a regulation win since 2014. So things were different then. I mean, it's just, it's, it's just nice to see that, that sort of thing going on, you know? Oh yeah. And that's, and that's something, like I said, that's something we could try to build on. Cause you know, who knows who's going to be left whenever everybody comes back. Like I said, I would, I would like to keep, keep my keys Chris at this point. Willie really call his Like, I don't know what's going on with this personal situation, so I don't want to speak on it. But Marquise Chris gives you energy. And, and I feel like he, he can at least bang with these guys down low. And then, you know, just let these other guys develop because the way the season's going, I mean, wow, well, I don't think we're going to the finals or anything like that. Like, the goal, anyway, I feel like was just to get out the first round. So who knows what's going to happen with that because obviously the West is as bad as it's ever been. But, sure. um, and hell, even Paul George is now out for a month and if not longer. So it's like, hey, let's just do what we can do. The Lakers are playing like crap, so that makes me happy. So you know, I'll, I'll take that all day, every day. Uh, I mean, it really it really is right now, I think, you know, prior to seeing them play with sort of this sort of energy, I mean, my colleague Josh Bow is basically like trade everyone. And tonight on our show, he – once again, repeated his sort of like trade everyone stakes, but he's, he's more of the opinion where it's just like, you know, just getting new guys to play hard has been a lot of fun to watch. And it really kind of gives credence to what we've been saying kind of as a fan base for a while that we just want to see different guys and, you know, just what that sort of difference can do in like your enjoyment for the game, even if they're losing. And the, you know, tonight they won, they go back, they play two games against Sacramento who are in a very strange, like Sacramento is like, like to me, just like a series of trap games for this Mavericks team. Cause they're not playing quite good enough. I don't think Luca will be back for either of them um, just for the COVID protocol stuff. I'm not a hundred percent sure. And it would be really, really nice to end 2021 on a high note in getting above 500 in these next two games. But uh, I feel like that's looking a little bit too far ahead because it's, you know, it seems like these Mavericks as a team, they have one really strong offensive performance and then they like go back to being really odd for a series of games. But, you know, we've not talked near enough about Josh Green. I want to hear some more Josh Green hype from you all because I uh, was pretty, pretty excited um, about <laughs> about Rebecca notes in the chat. I'd like to chat, but I'm home for Christmas, and I, my parents barely tolerated the late game. 1,000% understand that. I, I appreciate you giving, uh, hang, staying up late to hang out with us. Um, the, the Josh Green hype was really – that was like one of those games where uh, that had to be his best game. Am I crazy for thinking that, like both on oh, defense and on offense? 
That's definitely his best game. Like, cause I I, I can't think of anything else. Like, any any other game that he's played even semi decent. Because all the games he's played has either been garbage time, or when he's in the game he gets cooked by James Harden, or he gets cooked by you know so and so player. So that's his best game that I can remember since he's been on the maps. And you know, and and I need to look into this some more, but. I feel as if aspects of the Mavericks offense had gotten so stale where when the ball ends up in the corner, defenses have, were just sort of expecting Mavericks defender or off offensive players to shoot. And Green and Dorian Finney Smith have been cutting a ton from and really driving once they get those balls. And that was really what led Green. Like if, if you go look at some of his highlights, he made like the, the bullshit Dwayne Wade jump pass stuff over and over again, like the sort of thing that would make Rick Carlisle send him into space. And part of me understands why, but I also don't, you know, it's like fun. It's fun to watch. Like, I I don't care about turnovers as much as, 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 you know, this team's not really good enough to worry about like low turnover and stuff like that. Cause like they played low turnover games the last several years. And like, did it end up mattering? No, they weren't, you know, I just want to see Josh Green have a little bit of creativity. Like Josh Bowe, my, my podcast partner, sort of thinks that he should start just because, you know, uh, neither uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. nor um, Reggie Bullock have made the case that they're worth, like, that they should play. I mean, he's, he's earned it at this point. Like, I mean, well, I want to say earned it. It's just, it's just one game. But at this point, like you said, it's something different. So just mm-hmm. try something different. Reggie Bullock hasn't proven it. Tim Hardaway Jr. had a chance. He got the contract, and he he failed so far. He's just too inconsistent. So throw Josh Green in there because, like I said, it's just a switch up, and if it works, keep rolling it out. And then if it doesn't work, just try something else. That's right. Well, thanks for hanging out with me and helping me uh, carry the room. We don't have a lot of requests, but I uh, appreciate you talking and get some sleep, and we'll see each other probably on Wednesday, I'm sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I don't know why I'm even up by now, but I see you. Going, I see a link. I just clicked on it, and it's just instinct at this point. So later, man. Have a good night. Have a good one. All right, coming up next, we got Mike. Hey, Mike. Thanks for joining us late. What's going on? Hey, Kirk. Uh, yeah, thanks for having us up. Um, yeah, good to see my fellow countryman Josh have a good good game. It was his uh, highest assist number since. Uh, since high school, so I mean, his, um, his career yeah, high think, was uh, four. So he went from four to ten. Yeah, spot on. Like uh, it's uh, it's remarkable. But I think uh, I think when I was last on, I, was, I spoke about the ball moving a lot more. It just seems like there is that ball movement, it's not standing still, and they are getting those higher assist numbers. So you know, I think that's a really big positive, especially with all those sort of uh, temporary fill-ins that we've got at the moment. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's good to see that ball movement and and yeah, Josh Josh finally gets some minutes. I wasn't sure whether kid was going to give him a run coming back out of COVID. Me so either. That, that was nice to see. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So yeah, big big uh, big uh, hats off to to Jason Kidney. Look, he he mixed up the lineup tonight. The only thing I didn't like what he did was gave. Uh, Brandon Knight so much run and I mean he had an okay game like he, he scored a bit but uh, took a lot of junk shots which gave me the old uh, you know Timmy no 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 sort of uh, <laughs> three point shots. <laughs> I know what you mean there. That was kind of an was kind of an odd choice with the number of guys who were on the roster. Let me go see. I did have the the box score pulled up and of course I clicked away from it. But, yeah, you know, it's like one of these things. Seemed to play uh, yeah, Pin- Pinson and Chris. Minutes. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Big big minutes for the night, but you know the numbers for Pinson and uh, and uh, Chris were particularly down. So it was a strange rotation. But look, I mean, that, anything against that Portland defense was going to be pretty, uh, <laughs> you know, not not too hard of an assignment for for, for anyone who had a bit of uh, energy. In it. Sure. Well, with with the games the Mavericks have played against sub five hundred teams the last several years, it's that's one thing they've actually managed to do this year is is the teams who are at least in terms of like win profile worse than them they've beaten the crap out of those teams they just haven't been able to really notch some of the more difficult wins you know like the Utah game was one that I thought they could have had in hand and then the game just slipped late they like have a number of those sorts of games so it's like the the glass half full look is that that these guys have something 
and they just need to sort of weather the storm and maybe maybe switch up either the rotations or frankly make some trades and they could be in a better spot. Yeah, look, it's it's clear that they're obviously the, the coaching staff are trying to get a look at um, you know what they've got on the roster there, so they they did switch it up, especially once they got that that gap in the in the run on in the second quarter. So um, yeah, it gave them a pretty good opportunity to sort of assess the team. So yeah, it'll be interesting few games ahead. I'm looking forward to it. I, if they could finish out 2022 above 500, where 2021 above 500 with some of the mess that they've had, that would be pretty funny to me. Yeah, yeah, no, look, I think that would be a great result. So, yeah, with a couple of uh, question mark games coming up against Sacramento, at least they showed a bit better fight in the, the previous game or the, the game they played against them earlier this year. So, yeah, fingers crossed it can continue on like that and not like last season. That's right. That's right. Well, you enjoy the rest of your day, um, and Thanks, I Joe. hope you will join us soon. All right. Well, guys, it looks like we don't have a lot of complaining to do, which is good. Um, I will. I wanted. There's a couple of questions in the chat that I wanted to address when people were talking. Um, someone asked, you know, sort of my thought about Jason Kidd's quote in the post game, and I will simply say that when it was Callie uh, of the Dallas Morning News who tweeted it out first, um, everyone was so quick to note that his tone was like very like when you read like you know sometimes you just read versus hearing things and some things just read shitty like a lot my my tweets are almost a hundred percent guilty of this particularly when i'm pissy in game where it's just and sometimes i mean it funny sometimes i'm just saying something to get off my chest like kids quote about how they look different right now i it's not at all I, I, everyone keeps insisting particularly even a couple of guys from maps moneyball that were in on the the post game media insist that like that doesn't it in no way like when hearing it heard like the sort of thing where he was coming across as being critical of Luca Luca's been out for too long they've not played well enough this season like the energy in the ball movement is different I mean I think there's just something to it um whether he has the ball less or they figure out what to do with him when he comes back I think is something we just kind of kind of got to wait and see because even when he was playing they weren't playing that well I know that 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 may have to do with kind of the guys that he was with but it's at least something to I don't want to I don't want to read too much into it not after one of the more fun wins that I've had in a while um that's sort of sort of the thing I'm thinking about I saw who was it um somebody number of people noted just how bad the Portland defense was um and it it's really (laughs) This is where it's just like like I I wrote in my recap like don't let anybody take your joy over the fun of this win and then they're probably the worst defense I've seen this year. I just I just don't know how to how to even address it. Like Carlo in the chat says, "Hey Kirk, can you talk about the astounding amount of dunks that we saw today?" And that was just because of Portland had no healthy bigs, um, so it it should have been a rim attack fest. And then you kind of pair the the guys, you know, Porzingis was hitting hitting a few shots from three in the second quarter. That opened things up. Brandon Knight was dishing dimes. Like it was there's just some weird things happening. Like Jalen Brunson, his penetration is just so effective. Like there was one play, and I want to say it was at the end of the first half, where Porzingis on one wing passed it to Dorian on the opposite wing. It got tipped. Porzingis cut after passing it, like a little bit of a like an L-shaped cut. And Dorian found him for a dunk at the rim where it's like, how do you lose the seven foot three guy cutting from the opposite side? Like it was, it was really something. Now, you know, the Mavericks were assisted uh, 80% of their field goals tonight were assisted, which that that's high. Like that's absurdly high, particularly for these Mavericks. Um, Is that something they can duplicate? I mean, hitting shots helps. I think cutting and finding the right guys helps. I don't think you're like, playing a terrible defense helps. So it's, it's a little bit of both. Um, you know, Josh Green apparently said something in the post game where it's like part of how he got his cool pass led to the KP dunk was even he didn't expect the Portland defenders to be jumping at him. Um, so, you know, sometimes things just work out for the best and you see what you can carry over next game. Like the ball really does have energy. Um, and, you know, if these guys are starting to feel right at a time when they, you know, 
have been struggling recently, like that'd be great. You know, it's just like the vibes seem pretty good around the team, despite kind of their setbacks. Like this is sort of about weathering some things and we'll see where they, where they go from here because, you know, the, the Portland is, is sort of the, through the looking glass Mavericks um, where they've kept a lot of, you know, the, they kept certain elements of this team together way too long. And then they had to make, particular moves sort of out of desperation and not a single one of them has panned out. Um, so it's like things could always be worse when you have a superstar despite having a superstar. So it's just something to, to think about and hopefully we can, uh, the Mavericks can get back above 500 and we can, we can be content with things. Um, all right. I have been babbling to myself for about 20 minutes now. It's probably for the best that I uh, head on to bed. Um, this will go up on your podcast feed tomorrow. Go ahead and give it a download. Uh, once again, I'm sorry for not doing the post Christmas day one. I really, really wanted to, but I just, I just turned into a day where I I was sauced by like one in the morning. It was impossible. So, all right, guys, you guys, uh, I hope not many of you are working this week, but I have many, many people are, um, hopefully you can enjoy these shows and Josh and I will be back with you probably on Wednesday. You guys have a great start to your week.